I mean, just uh, that kind of makes me think about the development of one's original style. I mean, is that something that you've always been aware of and concerned with? I mean, just coming up with an original uh, way of making art that was your own. Yeah, that that was something I, I kind of was. Uh, I wanted to achieve. Um, I I know some people like to be recognized for a particular style or particular themes, and. Uh, because of the artists that I liked growing up, I kind of would have been inspired by that. And I said, well, I, I, I want to do my, my style. It's always, when people say styles now, it's very hard to be totally unique because we're all influenced by other artists and, and styles. But yeah, it was something I, I wanted to, to do to, to keep that particular um, style. Now, having said that, I've kind of changed a bit, you know, in recent years, in the last, say, five, six, seven years, uh, that I, I've been exploring other mediums and um, other ideas. And so that people, if people saw some of the art I've been doing now, they'd say, gosh, that's not the same person who did, you know, who, who did that, you know. So, so th there's a kind of, I suppose there's a branding in a way, you know, a lot of artists, they, they look at the whole marketing and they want you know to have a brand to have a name that you walk into a room and instantly recognize their style or whatever so it's probably more so the um the, the career uh, artist looking to establish themselves more they, they want to be recognized instantly and and uh, and then people who say buy this is kind of going into the, the whole commercial side but people who buy the art of of an artist tend to want to buy a painting that is recognizable, that is distinctively by that artist, you know. Right. And that, but uh, with that, uh, of course, comes the risk of sort of being trapped in a style, I guess, too. Yes. Yeah. There, and, and, and certain artists, you're labeled as, well, that's the guy who, who always paints the, the glistering waters or the, the, the sunsets or, or, or the horses or whatever. Um, there, there is, but it's also that's the artist who's became famous or became well known for that particular style, and the artist themselves has to put bread on the table, you know. So they might be able to work on other projects and other, you know, styles, but but they know that this is the bread and butter, and they will continue doing that, you know. So so it, there's there's fours and against, you know. The artist's creativity can be can be. Uh, stunted quite often as well um if you think well gosh i'm just going to paint these particular themes or styles because that's what people want and you it, it kind of like a bit of a manufacturing you know a conveyor belt you just um roll them off and that can definitely um uh hinder creativity right right that's that's why like such artists as let's say de Kooning are called uh, <laughs> painters yeah. painters because they were so unpredictable in their own way but still yeah recognizable but in a way never really confined to a specific style <laughs> well you know it, it, it's kind of interesting because I, I i i suppose i have two hats on me i have my artistic hat and my my uh, gallery hat um art dealer hat i'm i'm influenced by by what other what people will buy, and I know most artists, you, you know, you, you paint what you want to paint, and that's fair enough. But you also need to, if you're trying to make a living out of it, make some sort of, you know, to, to pay some of the bills. You do need to know what the buyer wants. Now, this sounds very cold and clinical, but uh, I'm I'm talking now from a, a, a commercial art gallery, you know, owner um, point of view that if if you don't, if you don't kind of leave yourself um, open to that, you you can you can very much then miss out on um, uh, on, on making it financially successful as an artist. You have to balance the two. The two. Sides. I think so. Yeah, there has to be a balance. You know. Do you feel like there's a there are trends that shape the market? Sometimes I think there is, and then other times I don't. And then sometimes I think, gosh, I have so much to learn. You know, uh, I, I'm looking at, you know, I, well, I have the gallery open for, say, 11 years. But, but prior to that, I would be looking at art. Trends come and go, like fashion, you know, like there's no one uh, dominant trend happening. I, okay, probably one trend I've seen becoming more popular would be the uh, urban art, uh, street art, 
this is something that I think the younger generation is um, attracted to. And I think uh, partly, you know, Banksy has a big part to play in that and, and other um, street artists from around that time. But I think Banksy was the one who really brought it to the front, the forefront in, in the art world. And um, the fact that it's so accessible, you know, you don't have to walk into an art gallery. You don't have to feel, you know, a lot of people would feel intimidated maybe walking into an art gallery, a commercial art gallery. But this was done on walls. It was kind of uh, so, so different, you know, like the artist wasn't getting paid for it. It was, in fact, it had to be done, you know, uh, illegally very often. And you have these beautiful, ingenious creations uh, on the walls and it could have taken days or it could have been done quite quickly but they were accessible for everyone and I think um, that that whole trend um, that has say in the last 20 25 years has grown a lot um, so yeah er, you know urban art um, uh, graffiti graffiti and street art you know uh, I, I tend not to use the word graffiti because it, it tends to give up a, a, a bad name, you know, like uh, you're vandalizing a wall, but um, I, street art where you have, you have artists who actually are pretty good and they're doing these wonderful creations. It, 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 it is a trend that has certainly taken off.